Alzheimer's disease. The brain is a complicated organ. To find out how it works, it is explored, dissected, and studied. One of the reasons scientists and doctors study the brain is to help them understand certain diseases that happen inside of it. One of these diseases is called Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a form of dementia. Some of the symptoms of dementia include memory loss, difficulties with problem solving, and physical disabilities. You may have heard of Alzheimer's before. Maybe you even know someone who has it. Sadly, this disease is the fifth highest leading cause of death for people over age 65, most of whom are women. And about one third of people over the age of 85 have some form of dementia or Alzheimer's disease. Old age is one reason people can get the disease, but genetics can also play a role. Genetics is the study of genes. Those genes determine if your hair is dark or light, or if your eyes are brown or green. Genes are passed on to us from our parents, and your parents' genes were passed on to them from their parents. If your parents have brown eyes, brown skin, and brown hair, then you are most likely to also have the same eye, skin, and hair color. That's why you may get told that you look like one of your family members. You share some of their genetic makeup. But it isn't just physical characteristics that are passed down to us from our families. We may also get some talents and special abilities that our parents have too. Unfortunately, there are also genes that can cause sickness and other problems. Those conditions can also be passed down to us through genetics. Alzheimer's is one of those diseases that can be passed down from a parent to a child. That does not mean that if your parent or grandparent had or has Alzheimer's, that you will automatically have it too. But it does increase someone's chances of getting it. Alzheimer's disease attacks the brain. The name of the disease comes from a German neurologist named Alloy Alzheimer. A neurologist is someone who studies and works on the brain. In 1906, Dr. Alzheimer was examining the brain of a woman who had died. In her final years of life, this woman struggled with memory loss and behavioral problems. As Dr. Alzheimer was studying her brain, he noticed microscopic spots that weren't normal and shouldn't be there. He called the spots plaques and tangles. These plaques and tangles were stopping her brain from sending messages to the rest of her body. As we get older, it is normal for some tangles to form in our brains. So, researchers don't know if it is the plaque that causes Alzheimer's, or if it is the plaque and tangles coming into contact with each other. As a person ages, they may forget things. That is normal. However, one of the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease is consistent memory loss, especially of recent events and new information. That means the person doesn't just forget things every once in a while. Instead, it is frequent, does not go away, and gets worse over time. This is the most noticeable trait of Alzheimer's disease. Someone with Alzheimer's may ask the same questions over and over. They might forget where the bathroom is or how to eat. Over time, they may not recognize their loved ones or remember where they are. Other symptoms of Alzheimer's disease include the following. Forgetting how to get dressed. Often repeating stories or saying the same thing again and again. Unable to learn new things. Unable to find the right words to say. Not making responsible decisions. Wandering away from home and becoming lost. Depression or becoming socially withdrawn. Changes in their personality. And unable to care for their day-to-day -day needs.
symptoms will vary from person to person, and some people with the disease do not have every single symptom. Struggling with Alzheimer's disease can be very confusing and scary for the person who has it as well as for their loved ones. There is no cure for Alzheimer's disease yet. However, many people who have it are given medications to help lessen their symptoms. Just like there is no cure for a cold, but there are medicines to help you feel better. If you know someone who has Alzheimer's disease, there are some things you can do to help them. You would never want to laugh or make fun of them. Instead, treat them with kindness and respect. They do not choose to have Alzheimer's, just like you don't choose to have a cold. Here is a brief list of activities you can do with a grandparent, friend, or others who have Alzheimer's disease. Look at their family photographs with them. Talk about their past vacations or things they did when they were younger. Read the news to them. Let them help with small chores around the house. Help them bake cookies or a meal, and then eat it together. Take a walk and talk with them. Play different board games together. Paint, draw, make crafts, or sing together. The symptom of Alzheimer's disease are minor in the beginning, but later become worse. So some activities will not be appropriate for everyone that has Alzheimer's. Whatever you choose to do, be sure you have permission from another adult to help. When we learn new things, a connection is made in our brain. Making new connections in our brain when we are young might help prevent Alzheimer's when we get older. We make connections by staying active physically and mentally. You exercise your body every time you run or walk, and your muscles become stronger. It works the same way in your brain. When we exercise our brain, it helps build connections and make it stronger too. You can exercise mentally by learning new things, no matter what age you are. Challenge your mind with puzzles, word games, riddles, or math problems. Spending too much time in front of a TV screen or smartphone is not the same as exercising your brain. Remember, the next time you are around someone who has dementia or Alzheimer's, they want to be talked to and interacted with, just like you do. It's not only good for their brain. It will also help them feel loved, and you'll feel pretty good too. Thanks for following Clarendon Learning. Be sure to subscribe. For more free resources, check us out at clarendonlearning.org.